This is a small-scale replica of the world's first useful electric motor. Its first iteration was designed and built in 1834 by Moritz Hermann von Jacobi. While there had been plenty of other electric motor designs made already in the 1820s, such as this Barlow's wheel design, none of them could come even close to being the whopping 15 watt motor that was Jacobi's motor. The design was further improved upon and optimized by Jacobi himself, and by 1838 he had produced an astounding 300 watt motor. Right, that's enough history. Let's make one. I think I got everything hooked up correctly now. This is gonna be the first time I'm gonna be trying this out. There we go. It works! So it works. But how does it work? From physics class, one should recall that if an electric current goes through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around that wire. So now, if we coil the wire up, then the circular magnetic field around the wire will compound on itself, seemingly creating a single, more powerful magnet running along the coil. This is an electromagnet and it is at the very heart of what makes not only the Jacobi's motor work, but every other modern electric motor as well. There are electromagnets on both the stator, the part of the motor that stays stationary, as well as the rotor, the part of the motor that rotates. Go figure. Crucially, these electromagnets are all connected in series, one after another, but the winding direction of the coil flips with each coil. The effect of this is that when current runs through the coils, the created magnets have alternating poles exposed. This means that each electromagnet on the rotor feels a pull towards the closest stator electromagnet with the opposite pole. Thus, the rotor starts to rotate. However, very quickly the rotor's poles will match up with the stator's poles. This means the rotor would just get stuck. To solve this, we add the final component to our motor, the commutator. The commutator is essentially just a rotating switch. It connects and disconnects power to the electromagnets at the proper times. In our case, the power of the coils is disconnected right before the rotor coils reach alignment with the stator poles. The inertia of the rotor then moves the rotor coils just slightly past the stator coils, at which point, power to the coils is returned. Crucially, however, this time the commutator connects the rotor's coils backwards, meaning the current in the rotor coils is opposite to what it was before, which in turn means that the created magnetic poles are reversed as well. Since similar poles repel, the rotor is now instead pushed away from the stator poles, further rotating the rotor. And uh, actually, that's it. Rinse and repeat. While a working design and power are great, a useful motor they do not make. So Jacobi decided that to demonstrate the usefulness of his motor, he would fit it to a boat. The boat would ferry up to 14 passengers at a time, granted at a fairly leisurely pace, up and down the Neva River in St. Petersburg, Orkland, I mean Russia. 
in respect of this historical achievement, I decided to build my own boat to be powered by my own Jacobi motor. The boat is powered by the Jacobi motor, obviously, which in turn gets its power from 8 of these lithium AA batteries. I found that alkaline AA batteries were not able to provide enough current. The motor turns the propeller through a pair of gears, which are in a ratio of 1 to 3. No, no, 1 to 3. Uh, whatever. For the steering, I decided to use an ESP32 and steal some code from online to make it into a Wi-Fi based servo controller. Alright, it works. <laughs> I have my RC set up. The ESP and servo are both powered from a set of four alkaline AA batteries. And finally, to hold everything in place, I used some random pieces of packing foam that I had laying a boat. I'm sorry. Okie dokie, this is gonna be the make or break. Well, it's floating. Oh, it totally works! <laughs> yes! <sighs> Ooh, nice. Alright, well, it's uh, time for real life test, I guess. Now, there is a lake just right there, but uh, yeah, it seems like winter does not want to go anywhere. So this little puddle will have to do. Test the steering. Seems to work, all right. And away we go. <laughs> You know, the Jacobi motor design is fairly similar to another motor design that recently has started to pick up quite a lot of steam. An axial flux motor. What's an axial flux motor? Well that is a story for another time. <laughs>